Today we will see the Cisco Packet Tracer activity on subnetting. We will start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to establish inter subnet communication. In the last lecture, we have seen this question subnet the IP address 150.15.0.0 into 500 hosts in each subnet. And we solved this using the 5 step approach and we got the subnets. These are the subnets we obtained. Let me now demonstrate how interland communication or inter subnet communication can be established. Can you see this is subnet number 1, subnet number 2, 3, 4, 5 and it goes on. And how many subnets we have? We have a total of 2 power 7 that is 128 subnets in this approach. Let's bring the subnets to the Cisco Packet Tracer environment. The Cisco Packet Tracer scenario is before us and we brought the subnets here. And these were the subnets we obtained for the previous problem. Now I am going to demonstrate how the inter subnet communication can happen. Already I have configured few things. Say I have brought in a switch and I have connected three PCs. And this is the IP address I have given to all the PCs. This is 150.15.2.1. This is 150.15.2.2. And this is 150.15.2.3. If you note here, this is belonging to the second subnet. So, this local area network is created with subnet number 2 that is the second subnet which is 150.15.2.0. So, I can't assign 150.15.2.0 to any of the host because it's the network address. Likewise, I can't even assign 150.15.3.255 which is the broadcast address of this subnet. So, a total of 512 IP addresses are possible in this case. I can use 510 IP addresses. So, I have just used only three IP address in this example. And this is subnet number 2. And we know the default subnet mask is 255.255.254.0. I have already assigned the IP address to all these PCs. Likewise, I have taken another local area network. For this local area network, I am preferring subnet number 5. This is 150.15.8.0. So, this computer or this host is assigned with the IP address 150.15.8.1. And this host is assigned with the IP address 150.15.8.2. And this host is assigned with the IP address 150.15.9.250. Is 9.250 a different IP? No, it is belonging to the same network. Can you notice here? 150.15.8.0 to 150.15.9.255. We can have all 512 possible hosts or IP addresses in this network. And 150.15.9.255 I cannot assign. But I can assign other IP addresses except this 8.0 and 9.255 to this local area network. Let's just verify whether IP address is assigned to all the PCs. Yes, the IP addresses are assigned. Likewise, I have assigned IP addresses to all the PCs in this local area network as well as in this local area network. Now, we can notice that these PCs inside this local area network can communicate among themselves. Say, yes, the communication between these two PCs is successful. Similarly, the communication between these two PC is also successful and the communication among these two PCs is also successful. So, this local area network is perfectly working fine. Similarly, this local area network is also working fine. Let me demonstrate this with this. This is also successful and between these two it is also successful. So, all the hosts inside this local area network can communicate as well. Now, I want this PC to communicate with this PC. If you note here, the IP address is a different IP address. Say, when I want to send a packet from this PC to this PC, for example, it is 150.15.8.1. When this host creates a packet, it puts this IP address as the source IP address and it has to put this IP address as the destination IP address. But unfortunately, this subnet mask will clearly instruct this PC that the destination IP address is not belonging to its own network. So obviously a switch cannot do this communication. We need a router to do this communication. So I am bringing in a router into the picture. So this router I need to connect this side as well as this side. So what I am going to do is I am going to take a cable. What cable is required in order to connect a router and a switch? It's obviously straight through cable, right? So in this port it's gigabit 0 bar 1 is connected to gigabit 0 bar 1 and in this side Gigabit 0 bar 2 is connected to Gigabit 0 bar 2. So we know this is Gigabit 0 bar 1 and this is also Gigabit 0 bar 1. This is Gigabit 0 bar 2, this is also Gigabit 0 bar 2. In order to avoid the confusion, I am putting a label here. 
This is gigabit 0 bar 2. This side is gigabit 0 bar 2 and this side is gigabit 0 bar 1. Now, these interfaces are turned off and we need to assign the IP address to this interface as well as to this interface. So, what IP address I need to assign to this interface? This interface must be a part of this local area network, right? So, this interface must be given an IP address in this subnet and this interface must be given an IP address in this subnet. So, in this subnet, we know we have taken subnet 2, right? So, this is the subnet we can use. So, we can use any IP address. So, what I am preferring is, I am choosing 150.15.2.100. I am choosing 2.100 to this interface. So, let me go to this router. Let me click on the configuration. It's gigabit 0 bar 1, right? So, what IP address I need to assign? It's 150.15.2.100. And we know the default subnet mask is class B only. I need to change it as 254.0 because it must belong to this local area network. So, after assigning the IP address, just ensure the IP is assigned properly and the interface is turned off now. I hope you can notice here. So, I am just turning on this interface. Now, this interface is being turned on. And meanwhile, we will assign IP address to this interface which is gigabit 0 bar 2. So, let me go on to this PC, gigabit 0 bar 2. Let me go on to this place and I will assign an IP in this subnet which is 150.15.9.100. Okay, I am choosing 9.100 in this case and it is also taking this 255.255.254.0 as the subnet mask. Just click on this on because we need to turn this interface on. Is that over? No. We know this is the default gateway for all these PCs in this subnet. Similarly, this is the default gateway for all these PCs in this local area network or in this subnet. For the interface gig 0 bar 1, we already have assigned an IP address which is 150.15.2.100 and we have already assigned the IP address to this interface which is 150.15.9.100, right? Now, let's instruct all these PCs that what is the default gateway. So, let's go to this PC and we will inform the default gateway is 150.15.2.100. Let me just copy this so that I can easily paste it on all other PCs in this subnet. So, I'm just pasting this here. Also, I am pasting the same default gateway in this PC also. So, this side is over. And what about this side? In this side also, we need to assign the default gateway for all these PCs. But here, the default gateway is 150.15.9.100. I hope you can understand this. So, copy this and let me paste on this to all these PCs in the default gateway. Now, we are at the verge of completion of this configuration. And we are done. Now, let's see the inter-subnet communication. Just observe here. I am taking a packet. This is the source computer. This is the destination computer. Sometimes the first packet will be failed. Let me tell you why the first address is failed later, not now. So, let me choose the same source and the same destination, but for the second time, the communication is successful. Let's check other PCs also. Let's check the second PC of this subnet to communicate with the second PC of this subnet. The first time communication may get failed, but definitely the second time communication will be successful. Can you notice here, it is successful. Now, let's ping the first PC of this subnet to the last PC of this subnet. So, what is the IP address of this PC? It's 150.15.9.250. Let me go on to this PC, command prompt, ping 150.15.9.250. So, the first packet may get failed, but obviously we'll be getting reply for the second packet and so on. I hope you can witness this. The first packet is getting failed, but then later on we are getting replies and henceforth all communication will be successful between these two subnets. And that's the inter-subnet communication using Cisco Packet Tracer. Inter-subnet communication can also be termed as inter-LAN communication because a subnet is one local area network. And that's it guys. I hope now you know how to establish the inter-subnet communication. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.